Welcome back, next episode in the How to Build a Coffee Table series. Today we're going to get this thing assembled. That sounds good, stick around. Welcome back to The Wood Crafter. I'm Andy Guile and our mission here is to inspire, educate and support you in your journey to becoming a better woodworker. We do that through a whole series of video productions, how to build something series like this one, tool tips, tool reviews, tool techniques, safe use, general conversations that's relevant to our interest in woodworking and really come together and have a jolly old chat. So if you're new here and you're not a subscriber, welcome. Consider subscribing now. Leave me a thumbs up so I know you like what we're doing and get in touch. Leave a comment, questions, feedback, reviews, all welcome and I respond to each and every one. So with that said, let's get going. So this is where we're up to. We now have a number of sub-assemblies. We have a couple of leg sub-assemblies and we have the overall internal framework. And today's job is I want to bring these together and fit the top. Now we're not quite ready for the glue up. We've got the domino holes cut here, but I now need to work out where these domino holes are going to go in the legs. Now when it comes to fitting the legs, I want to make sure that this surface here is perfectly in line and flush with the, this part of the frame. Now we've already cut the bottom domino in place. So this is simply a matter of getting yourself on a flat surface. And one great thing about the MFT is this is a flat surface. I'll line up those bottom dominoes there. Okay. Don't worry about the position left to right. And what we want to do is just to mark out the center point of that domino. And if you look at the way dominoes are machined, this is an oversized one to show you the point, you can see that it comes out to a small ridge here and a small ridge here in the machining. And that's pretty consistent across every single domino that you're going to see. So this domino here has that small ridge. So I can just make a pencil mark where that ridge is. And then that and that are the center points of my domino. I can make a mark, I can mark that off now. So that's where my domino has got to sit. Now the second mark is left to right and that's the center point of the dominoes that we've already cut. Now these dominoes, when we cut them on the slightly wider slot, the second slot, come out at 20, ooh, at 25 millimeters. So the center point of a domino is 12 and a half millimeters, 25 divided by two, which is going to be about there. So I can now take that center point of the domino, and it's not got to be super accurate because these are oversized of course, and now I can transfer that line here and here. So I now know the center point of my domino up and down and the center point of my domino left and right. Simples. Where's my cutter? Now we know that this is the reference face we're going to use on the domino and we know that that's 10 millimeters in from the center point of the domino cutter. So we now need to take this line here and drop it down by 10 millimeters. And then when I line this face up to that 10 millimeter mark, that will come out bang on center for us. I'm just going to use this rather neat angled inker rule for this. Make my, put my pencil on that mark and slide the rule in. And now I can make a 10 millimeter mark there. and square that across. So that's the line I'm actually going to use as my reference line. Line up the base of the domino here, 10 millimeter offset will cut in the middle there. 
As good as a domino cutter actually is, I find that when you're plunging down in a cross cut situation, i.e. you're cutting across the grain, it can have a tendency to twitch and flick on you and that can take your lines out. So what I want to do now is to bring in a little bit of extra support just by using a old scrap piece of wood. But I know that this scrap piece of wood is square, it's four square or round because we did that as an earlier part of the activity. And I've just taken an arbitrary line here and just squared that line. So I can now line this up to this centre mark so it can now be flush against this piece here and this centre mark can line up here like so and I can now clamp that into position. And that's just going to give me an extra bit of support for the domino cutter. Loosely line up, light bit of clamping pressure, and now I can line this thing up where I want it to be. Make sure everything's nice and square. And clamp it down in its final position. I'm putting quite a lot of clamping pressure on this because I do not want this to twitch. And if you've used a domino in a, in a hardwood like oak across the grain, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If you've not, this is a good tip. So I can just come in the domino now, and I don't need to think about that reference point. That's already made for me because of this block of wood. And I can just line the centre mark up on my plate with the reference mark on my block of wood. There. I can hold this into position really quite firmly now and I can very gently plunge down and that should give me a perfect cut in the perfect position. Let's give it a go and see whether the theory works. And then that's what we end up with. We've got a domino in exactly the right place. You can see it lines up to this end one. And you can see to the centre of that is directly on that line that we were aiming for. So that's a useful little technique for you. Just to make sure everything is going to work out. And then I repeat on this side as well. Exactly the same technique. So all the dominoes cut, this should now go together reasonably well on a dry fit. Gorgeous, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And it doesn't get much better than that. These are beautifully lined up. This is beautifully lined up. Everything's looking gorgeous. These joints are nice once that's clamped together. And I've got enough movement to give me this perfect two millimeter line I was looking for. So I think we should now go ahead and glue this together. For added strength, I am going to put some glue on these faces to give me some long grain to long grain support as well. And that's just for additional strength. Probably won't need it, but hey ho, that's good for me. Um, let's go. Usual story, glue into the domino mortises, cloth ready, brush ready, lolly stick ready. Clamps are ready to go, but we'll come back to those in a second. It's a slightly different type of glue up. I want to put a little bit of glue down here for that face joint, but I don't want to go outside those dominoes. I want to try and avoid too much squeeze out here. There will be a bit, but obviously I want to try and avoid that. So just a nice, thin sliver. Do something similar here. Just going to put a little bit of glue to begin with down my inner joint on this.
I just want to pull this in now so these joints at the bottom here just seat together and I can just use this now as a pivot point to adjust the two millimeter gap I'm looking for ever so slightly 2.2 good now with that in place just want to clamp that down a little bit it's five at the top I'll bring this out a bit Now at the top now I've got a gap of, that's good, that's both 2.1, now I'll just quickly check this end, it should be reasonably there now. So I've now got this gap to be consistently 2.1 all the way around, and I'm going to clamp these in, nice and, nice and tight now. That glue is just beginning to bobble now, so that's as much as we're going to get in terms of adjustment time on the table, but that's really good. So my tops are all nice and flush. All my shadow lines are within 0.1 of a millimetre, 2 millimetres, which is the same as we had on the end. And everything's nice and tight. So we'll just check ourselves for square on these bottom legs. Bang on there bang on there looking good this guys yep bang on there and oh, bang on there Whew. so the frame is now glued up so there we go we've just got to let this set now and then we can put the top on it okay so i've got the tabletop back I've simplified the clamping, so it's just giving it a bit of strength, no clamping pressure now, because it's already started to set on the glue, but the glue's not quite where I want it to be in terms of firmness. So I've just simplified the clamping, two clamps on either side, these coils are out of the way of the top, so I can now go ahead and look at connecting the frame to the tabletop. Do you like the cups by the way? Now available on the store over at the website. Subtle hint. So I'm going to make some blocks to fit this in. Now these blocks will sit against this outside panel here. They'll be screwed and glued on. There'll be one here, there'll be one there. Inside the centre there'll be a triangle. One here, one here, and one here. And on this end there'll be one here, and there'll be one here. Now those blocks will allow me to screw the top to the frame, there'll be elongated slots inside it, but they're really, really, really robust. And because of those strategic points, that will just make sure that I don't get that flex. Or not make sure, but will reduce the chance of the top twisting over time. So I'll get a secure fixing, I'll get wood movement, and I will get a bit of stability for the top. Now these blocks aren't complicated, and I've got this rather nice chunk of oak left over from when we ripped down something or other i have no idea what probably the tabletop no idea so we're just going to four square this over on the planer jointer thicknesser nothing new and then we'll just then we'll just chop this down into a number of areas and actually i'll probably do three one two three here then then one two three here and one two three at this end and then we'll see how that looks so i'll bring this down to four square over on the planar jointer nothing new and exciting on that so i'll just do that off camera and come back and um, then we we'll look at putting some elongated slots into this and i've been thinking about this and i might actually use the domino to give me those elongated slots and then we'll cut it to length and we'll get this thing mounted i'll see you in a minute now these are going to be glued onto these panels and we'll also screw them in so we just need to put some holes through here for our screws and we also need to just put a slot in the top here to fix it to the tabletop so these are going to be glued and screwed into this bottom frame here so these screws need to come in about halfway into this material which is about there so i'll drill a clearance hole for the shaft all the way through and then we'll do a counter bore on the top of about 16 millimeters and then that can be glued and screwed into position like so and then in the center here we will then drill an elongated slot to allow for these screws to fit in let's do these first of all and then we can look at that center slot and now we can carefully come in and put the counter bore in place 
Now these acolytes are good and give you the depth, but they do have a habit of slipping if you go in too hard. So go check yourself each time. Now the next job is I need to cut an elongated slot into each of these that will allow the tabletop to slide and expand and contract. Now I've never tried before, I'm going to try something different. If you think about the shape of a domino, it gives me an elongated slot. Now it so happens that this one, which is a 5mm domino, is the right thickness for the screws that we're going to use. Also happens that these are 28 millimeters thick nominally, and it so happens I've got a maximum depth of cut of 28 millimeters, so that will more or less penetrate through here. So my thinking is, I will use a domino with the 5 millimeter cutter to cut me a slot, a domino-shaped slot here in the center of each of these pieces of material. And also, if I counterbore the top ever so slightly, that's going to give me a reasonable depth here to screw into the tabletop. And that's going to look pretty good, I think. So we're going to try something different. It doesn't work, we'll just do something different again. But it's always worth trying these things. I say I've never tried this before, so who knows what's going to happen. So the frame is all now nicely dried, looking really good. All these joints are looking nice and tight, loving the shadow line. So now I want to just drop these into place. Simply matter, glue on both surfaces, clamp those into place, and then screws in here, and then we'll give the glue time to go off. Let's get that done. I'm just going to use this here, just as a bit of a spacer, and then that way all these are consistent all the way around. Not really important, just one of those little touches that I like. So a nice layer of glue on this one here. Going to put more glue than I normally would on this because I'm going to use this to transfer onto that side. I'm just going to slide that back in two and that's going to put glue on the other side for me. Bring in a spacing block. Now I want to make sure that this here is flush with this top surface. If anything slightly below but you never want it prouder and then we can come along and we can screw that in notice i'm using just the normal screwdriver for this no electronic devices that's because i want to feel the screw going in and then i can just feel when that's biting i sometimes find if you're using electronic devices for this you lose touch with the screw a little bit and it's very very easy to drive it too far or it not bite properly and you don't really get to feel that whereas this way I can feel that biting now so I know I'm into this side here and then I can get to the point where it is tight there and now I know I'm not going to drive the screw too far and blow out this side surface but I know I've got a good joint inside there just clean off any glue squeeze out and do the next one and it's looking pretty good to be honest with you I'm quite pleased with this so what I now need to do is to make sure that this is centered so I need 50 at the end and 25 at the front And that's looking good and this has not got to be a lot of clamping pressure I just want to make sure that this doesn't move and that would appear to be good enough to be honest bit <laughs> precarious on the clamp but I think that's got it and the same on the other end to stop it moving now final check I'm 25 there I'm 25 there I'm 50 there And 50 there and 50 there and it's all looking pretty good to be honest it's all looking nice and flat and flush and it all looks pretty much 
where I want it to be. So with that done, I think we can now screw this top into place. Next thing I want to do is just to make sure that this is all nice and clean. I've got a small chip here on the top, unfortunately. I just need to sand down a little bit. Make sure all these small bits of glue marks are off. And then we take the top off again. And we, uh, <laughs> and we put some finish on this. But that's pretty good. And that's as far as I wanted to go today to get to this position. Frame's all glued up. The top is now on. So I'll just go ahead now and sand this down, just so it's fine, a little bit of sanding to make sure it's all nice and clean and tidy. And I'm going to be using hand sanding for that, no electric devices at this point, because you really do need to take your time, you need to be gentle, treat it now with respect. But yeah, it looks like a coffee table, it's coming together really well, I'm completely shattered. I'll see you next time.